All right, hi everyone. Um, and I take the lead today to cover the basic settings we have on our phone and uh, tablets, basically all or any of the Android devices that we have. So uh, we'll begin by the basics. I'm sure most of you know that, but um, some of the shortcuts which are easily accessible on our phone, like our Wi-Fi settings, uh, mobile data, how do we want to use our service providers that could be um, Rogers or Fido or public mobile or whichever service we are using uh, to use internet and data with mobile data as the icon. Bluetooth to share and exchange documents or um, any other files or details between different devices. Auto rotate if we want to use it to toggle it off so that our screen is um, constant without a change or on, flashlight, airplane mode. Airplane mode is something that comes very handy whenever we are traveling or maybe when um, we just want to use internet and do our silent browsing on the phone without getting any calls or messages because the only basic feature is that when we turn the airplane mode on, we go um, off or offline from our service provider or the network, the um, telephone network that we are on while using all the other features of the phone. Uh, location services, basically, um, whenever we want to use GPS or like maps or um, Uber applications or any of the tax riding app, um, taxi or cab applications, which could help us locate our location. Um, and we can always customize this. Every phone has different settings on what all would we like our shortcuts to show us. But these are the basic shortcuts. Once we go through them, we basically just juggle down to um, settings. I'm sorry, there's a lot of clutter on my phone. Please ignore that. But we will all have something called settings on our phone, where from where we can control various features on our phone, right from Wi-Fi and internet. So if we want to connect or want to check which Wi-Fi network are we connected to, it shows top on the bar, or otherwise we can always click it and go and join another networks or see what other networks are accessible um, wherever we are located at. SIM and network, um, data usage, hotspot and tethering, airplane mode, all of these settings basically, everything and anything to do with network and internet will be based under this header called Wi-Fi and internet. Um, the next will be usually um, either Bluetooth or other device connection options from where you can connect or pair devices to work with Bluetooth or um, other ways to connect to various devices. The next, uh, but one of the very important features for any phone is display, right? Because this is the place where from where we can control the brightness of our screen, um, when does the phone or the device goes to sleep and also select the night mode, which is basically selecting the time from when to when we want our phone to be silent or uh, have this different display adaptiveness and be quieter during the night time. Um, ambient display, also a place from where we select wallpapers. Um, every phone will have its own set of wallpapers we can select from or otherwise have one of our photos or pictures in our gallery or photos app to be as our wallpaper. Um, theme, which is basically um, if we want to have a darker theme, which you can see on my phone right now so that it eats up less energy and less battery. But then we can always toggle between lighter themes. If you see this whole theme went white and black when I clicked on that. So we can toggle between themes. We can also um, go and have different fonts. If I keep browsing down, this is the place where the display app will let me select the font size. So if I want to go higher, if I want the text on my screen to look bigger, I can always do that from the font size um, section. And then of course comes the display size too. So there will be a default 
sizes that every phone a manufacturer will have on your phone, but you will always have an option to make it bigger, larger or smaller, depending on how you like it. So this is where you can select the display size and make it bigger if you like, or go back to the normal reset of default. Let me go back and um, then again, um, different features again, similar to what we saw earlier on the toggle screen, but an auto rotate feature so that when you move your phone horizontally or vertically, the image or the video that we are watching can always auto rotate. And the screen saver, of course, so that when our screen is off and we are not using our phone, what is the screen saver? that we can look at. So it could be a picture, it could be a video, or it could be just as simple as a clock, which you see on my screen right now. And then we come out of display. Um, and then we move to a section called apps and notifications. So basically all the applications that are by default on our phones or what we might have downloaded over a period of time. So basically um, a list of all the applications that we have on our phone and um, notifications. So currently you will see that on my phone, I have notifications switched off for uh, 20 of the applications, mostly because they keep popping up on the screen and uh, makes me just pick it up and look, even though it might not be very important at that point in time. So there is a feature where I can, or all of us can go and switch switch off notifications or switch them on, depending on what our preference might be. So like for my example, if I wanna to go to Gmail and want to check if the notifications is on or not, because I would like to be notified every time an email comes. And that is why the notifications is on here. But we can always go back and flip it off, not for Gmail, but any other applications by one by one. And, um, choose vice versa, choose to switch it on or off. There is also a very nice feature in some of the new smartphones where you can see the different permissions we might have granted to some apps. And we want to have a control over them because um, we wouldn't want unnecessarily applications to have access to let's say our camera or call logs or calendar or location or we might want to voluntarily go and give access to some of these applications so that they can keep a better track of our calendar and programs and invites. And we can do that through here. So I can go, for example, here out here, click on camera and see all which are all the applications I have granted access to my camera. Correct. And toggle off and always uh, change the settings whenever I want to. That is called app permissions. And uh, basically most of the important features that we want to look in apps and notifications. The next one will be sound. As we all know, we can control different uh, volumes. One is the ring volume, where every time my phone rings, the volume of the media and the alarm. And depending on the phone you are using or the device you have, there might be various other options that you could see. Um, we can also um, select the various ringtones that we want to have for the phone, the SMS, or all the other default notification sounds that we want to might have. We can also out here select if we want uh, the vibration mode to be on. Would we want the cell phone or the device to vibrate every time a call comes? or when we touch it or various sounds when we have, or we're working on a dial pad tone or touch sounds and various other options to explore from. There's a lot to explore here and pretty interesting like the display app. Um, I'm gonna skip buttons and gestures because it might not be very relevant unless you like using shortcuts or the buttons over the edges of your phone to work differently or have various shortcuts. We can always cover them later in the breakout sessions if you're interested, but battery is important. So this is the section which shows us or displays 
um, the battery that we have on our device right now, what's the percentage at and how much will it last? So on my screen, if you see, it tells me that my phone should last till 745 and I have enough battery on my 74% of battery on me right now. There'll be other options here to save on the energy like battery saver and optimization. You can keep exploring them, but you might as well just skip it and leave it be and use it just to check um, what's the battery right now and where do we stand from that perspective. Uh, the storage um, section will give me a similar look into what's the total storage or memory size on my phone and um, how much of it am I using right now? And uh, which or one, which one of the apps or features is using the most of my storage space? So if you see here, most of it is being used by my photos and videos. I have a lot of photos and videos on my phone and hence that's where it's taking most of the storage space. And uh, what other areas are basically utilizing the space. All of this can be viewed from the storage section. And then I go back and come into something called security and lock screen. This is the place from where we can set up passwords if we want for our phone. Um, there are various ways now that we can secure our devices, be it through different patterns or a code, a numeric code, or maybe face recognition um, and multiple areas. But this is the place security and lock screen from where we can access all of the features. Add in fingerprint, as you can see, a face unlock or a smart lock or have multiple combinations of it. I could have both saying that I would like a certain app on my device to first recognize my face and then still prompt me for a key code. Correct. All of this um, is accessible through the security and lock screen. It will let me also um, again switch on or off the location feature because it comes under privacy. Uh, the privacy settings can be easily found under security and lock screen. Um, I can choose to show passwords so that whenever I am typing or keying in the passwords instead of showing just little dots or um, stars that I usually see, I would rather select this setting to show me what am I typing to be doubly sure I'm doing it correctly. And I'm gonna go back and go to accounts. Accounts is something or an area which uh, basically shows the accounts that I'm using and on various apps which needs me to log in. For example, Facebook, Google, Messenger, or Twitter. And um, these are the places I have my accounts logged in and synced in. Typically, we don't have to do much with it because every time we download an app and we give it permissions or we sign in, these will be auto stored to this section. But we can always go to the accounts and refer and check which is the email account or the uh, various other accounts that we have used to log in or use various apps. Um, I'm gonna skip utilities again because it's got to do um, more with features like quick pay i can set up a quick pay with android pay or google pay or any other wallets and features if i'm using but if we are not and we go by our simple um, online banking or interact or any other features or normal cashier banking we can just um, ignore it or maybe we can cover it if any of you have any specific questions in the breakout room maybe later um, systems is something that will give me access to many other features like accessibility where, um, you know, various features like talk back or switch access or text to speech output enables and, you know, can be taken care of. Again, many various accessibility settings related to display, screen readers, color inversion. So if, for example, I want the colors to be inverted on my phone, uh, there is a feature which is not letting you guys see that, but on my phone, it basically has converted the colors. 
So instead of black to white, what I can now see is a white background and color inverted black um, text. It also lets me select features that what are the different buttons on the edges of my screen that can do if the power button can end the call or take the call, auto rotate, vibration, and also something called mono audio. So most of us have default settings set, set up as stereo audio. That is whenever we are listening to an audio, be it a song or something on YouTube or any or a piece of news or anything on WhatsApp, uh, we have stereo sound enabled. That is if you put our earphones, we might have both the earphones giving a, a minutely different output at a time. So if we select mono audio, the benefit is that both the earphones will give out the same output. So if, um, if there's anyone who has difficulty with an audio or in one of the ears, please do switch on this feature because it comes very handy and useful as both the earphones or the by default um, sound settings on your phone will be equal and not be very different on the left or the right ear and yeah basically just that so that is accessibility uh, what i can select in language and input is various keyboards and different languages for example that i would like um, my keyboard to let me type in or enable in so by default, it must be English on most of the devices, but I can always add a language, for example, Francais. And uh, my key keyboard now will let me type in both of these languages or, you know, will let you choose among many, many various languages all around the world, whichever you would like to experiment with. That is how we add a language to our keyboard um, that we might type in. Um, we also have an option of spell checker, a very good feature because it just lets us know well the spell check and what we are, whatever we are typing is correct or not. Very similar to most features on a laptop or a computer that you might be using. Um, autofill service, again, something that comes very handy. Um, because I, for example, if not very keen to fill up the same information or use very different logins each and every time whenever someone asks me to log in or fill in my details, I could simply select the Google account as my autofill service. So every time I go or visit a new website where I need to enter my login credentials or any other pertinent details, whatever my Google account has saved information will be used autofill on its own and I do not have to sit and enter everything manually again. So this sometimes comes very handy if you don't have multiple accounts or you just use one simple uh, Google account for most of the logins and um, features into various accounts and apps. So autofill, um, again text-to-speech output where uh, you can always have uh, features to select or control the speech rate or the pitch rate up and down depending on how you're comfortable it comfortable with it play it and see if that is good enough for your settings and come back and reset so that's all about language and input uh, date and time will let us select the network either manually or automatically. So whenever we change zones or we travel or we move to a new area or place, the phone or the device will automatically set up the date and time as per the region. Automatic time zone, uh, this is automatic. If, for example, I want to know or I want to work with a different time zone, I can always select that option too. For example, my mother is in a different time zone right now. And if I want my phone to diligently uh, be set up as per her time zone so that I can make calls or talk to her or send emails or block her calendar in a particular time, I can do that manually too by just switching it off and selecting the time zone um, manually, correct? Or otherwise I simply go click on automatic time zone and it will pick up my time zone. We can use the 24 hour format so that the time um, 
looks more around 1300 hours instead of 1 p.m. That is a 12 hour format. So whichever we are comfortable with can always be changed or accessed through the date and time setting. Then comes uh, options like backup where you can select a cloud network or maybe a Google Drive or any other place where you, you would want your data to be backed up. So any and all data that relates to your apps and photos and your chats and messages and call history and contacts can be backed up um, on a Google Drive. So whenever you move on to a new device and you log in through your Google account, all of this gets naturally synced, automatically synced, and you don't have to work um, by manually setting this up on your new device. Reset options. So if at all your phone goes or your device goes honky dory and you don't know what's wrong with it and you would rather go back to your earlier settings to the good old times, you can always do that with the reset option. And you can, depending on again, the device you have, there'll be various reset options that would you like just your Wi-Fi, mobile and Bluetooth to be reset or application preferences, or you want to just go back to the way you got your new device and there was nothing in it by selecting factory reset. But a word of caution, when you select on factory reset, it would actually erase everything that you might have downloaded or saved on your phone and will make it as new as when you really unboxed it or unsealed it and started using it. So be careful of it. If at all you have to do that, take somebody's help or maybe save all of your data yourself first onto your computer or any other device before um, just resetting everything back to the factory setting. But there's always a feature to do that. If we can't figure out what's wrong with the phone and um, you know, just plays up on you, do that. There will also be an option to select various users on the phone, like we do on a computer. So if there are various multiple users that are using a common device, we could have it set up here. So as of now, you only see me, that is Gagandeep as an admin, because I'm the only one who uses this phone. If I was to share it with, let's say, a sibling or my mother again, so I could add a user by clicking on add user and setting it up. So that both of us can, even though on the same device, have different settings and have different things to work on. And um, always select the guest feature too, if we want somebody to use just the basic features of a guest on our phone. Okay, and then there'll be something called system updates. You can't see it on my screen, but that's the bottom last um, icon. System updates is basically, as on our computer, it tells us whether the latest operating system, which is the operating system that we have, whether it needs an update or not. It currently tells me that my system is up to date, so I don't need to do anything. But um, yeah, that's the last feature under the system settings to check what is it. And of course, about phone. So if you want to check the features of your device, um, what are the capabilities and everything else, you can always click on the about phone or the about device um, section on your device and check it out. It will tell various things like the, the name of the device. So that and the storage space that you have, the camera and screen and the Android version that you're using right now and the usual features. So some of you, um, again, depending on the device you have, may see something over and above what you see on my phone right now. There may be different headings or different features that you might see. Um, some of it will be consolidated under one of them here, or maybe there'll be another section that would be for the ease or for the better user interface might be called out separately. But your settings um, section on your device should be able to guide you or let you control most of the features about, or rather all of the features that you have on your uh, device. And that is a very important and easy to use section.